Hi everyone, welcome back to EIS Alaska. As you can see, we're down here working on the fishtail. You might also notice in the background, our halibut reel is on the boat. And that means we are gonna go after some halibut here in a short time. That's right. So, uh, we're just now starting to get stuff put together. I uh, got a couple of changes planned. Uh, or you can see the reel is, well, you might not be able to see, but the reel is backwards compared to how it usually is. The motor is usually over here. What we have planned there is we're actually gonna scooch the reel back a little bit and side haul off the boat. That'll make it a little easier hauling in more uh, adverse conditions and hopefully just in general make it a li little easier to haul like it, as far as flow goes yeah the reason we initially set it up the way we did is that we didn't have um, steering control on on the boat and so stern hauling you know even if it's windy out and rough uh, that line will just it'll pull you through the water um, but it's really really hard to steer back here you basically can't steer if it's windy you just stand up in the trough and you're kind of at the mercy of the ocean uh, your line gets stretched out real far it's kind of a hassle when it's nice out it's no big deal it's really pleasant to haul off the stern but if it's windy and rough then it really does create a lot of challenges and so um, one of the big benefits is hauling off this off your midships you're able to turn on your line you can spin around your line you can run down it it's a lot easier to do that so now that we have steering controls and throttle controls which we've had actually for quite some time now um, we're just going to go ahead and and move it and see if we like it um, the concept is basically the same uh, with a few minor differences number one obviously the reel is in a different position and the level line is facing forward um, we'll need to put a small block off our mast just to redirect the line and we'll have a small block off of our um, davit right there that's got our crab block on it and so the line will come up through that it'll go over to the block on the mast and come back to the level wind which will reel it onto the onto the reel evenly so that's the the main differences right there um, of course we've got controls up there already so that's convenient um, We'll probably use our same long hose back here because it's not quite the, sa the same amount of distance but it's pretty close by the time we run it over and back and so that's going to work out good and then um, our throttle and steering controls are just on a long cable anyways and so we can just put those anywhere that's convenient up forward obviously mm -hmm. and I think <clears throat> all in all it should be pretty nice yeah settings should be about the same Mm -hmm. uh, no real changes there, just that the line comes off the bottom of the reel instead of the top. Yeah. So it may drag on the bait tub, but we'll just have to play that one by ear. I don't think it'll be too bad. We might have to put uh, just a pipe across the center of the reel there and put probably some PVC on it. And that could redirect it up, up and out uh, without too much trouble. Um, yeah. So there's a few things, you know, and probably going to be a couple of things that we overlooked that we'll have to, to change, but uh, we'll just go out and do a little day trip and, and see how things work out. Yeah, do a little shakedown run and see if we like it. I think we will. Yeah, our, our crab dab it may or may not stay. We have another uh, small A-frame that we've used for seining that we can flip over and hang a block off that if we don't like that. Um, our initial thought was to try it with this one and, and just see how it works out, see if it's comfortable. If it's not, then we'll change that. So yeah, pretty excited about that. Um, that's kind of the normal thing is to haul off that side. Um, a lot of the Russian boats do haul off the stern and like I say, that was just uh, the best option for us at the time, the, the, the most cost-effective option at the time. We always had throttle back here, 
and able to control the boat, you know, forward and reverse, but just no steering. And uh, you can't haul off the side without steering. You'd just be pulling yourself sideways through the water the whole time. And so it's, you definitely have to have it up there. And uh, you're probably wondering why I'm polishing up the stern here. I'm just, just gonna polish up all this aluminum, I think. <laughs> A little hobby. Yep. Actually, we're uh, getting ready to put our vessel name and the hailing port on the stern here. We haven't had it on here for quite some time, and yeah, the Coast Guard's been cool about it, but it's time to get it back on there. And so, um, just a kind of a quick shout out to um, the guys that we originally got our ADF and G and our vessel name up forward. Uh, it was done by a company called lettering.com. Uh, we ordered that way back in 20, 2009. So that's been on here for 14 years now. Um, it's done really well, but uh, it's time to replace it too. Uh, this one is just really starting to go now. Our name on the bow kind of went Probably a couple years ago, ago yeah. Yeah, it, it was really bright, and then one winter it was just gone. You can still see it there. But this was basically a, a, a blue lettering with a black outline, um, printed vinyl, outdoor stuff. I think that the normal expectation is about seven years on it, so I mean, it went above and beyond, really. I think we got a solid 11 years out of it before it started to fail on us. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I want to give that company a shout out is because they were great to work with. They've got a really good website that you just design your lettering, whatever font you want, if you want an outline, if you want a drop shadow, if you want a curve, it's all there. Um, they cut it, they send it to you, they got good instructions on how to install it. Me and Anita put this stuff on, like they say, you know, 14 plus years ago and didn't have a bit of a problem. And probably one of the coolest things is that a while back, I contacted them because I wanted to get the final cut for the stern and they still had our original order on file with all the specifics, the font, the coloring, everything. I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, 14 years later and that stuff is still right there. I contacted them, they sent me an email with a link to it and so I just wanted to give those guys a shout out at, at uh, lettering.com because that's a good company, I think. Um, Going forward though, because we have to do this vessel and we'll have the ADF and G, the name on the bow, or the name on the flying bridge, the name on the bow on both sides, the stern and the hailing port, and we have to also do it for the Mobile. We're looking at well over $800 if we ordered from those guys. So instead, we just bought a vinyl cutting machine and we are doing our own vinyl now. It actually worked out to be about the same price for the machine and the vinyl. That's uh, a roll of black, a roll of blue, and a roll of green. And we use those on both vessels. And then one of the nice things is that we have a vinyl machine for everything else that we want to put vinyl on. So it, it really is going to cover a lot of bases for not only our vessels, but also our seafood business. We can do a lot of different things with it. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. So yeah, we're just getting ready to put these on here. Um, it's been a little bit of a learning experience with it, but, but not too bad. Um, it's a good machine and uh, a pretty good, a pretty good uh, program. And same thing, you can pick all your own fonts and you can put curves on your lettering and I mean really anything you could do with like Photoshop or anything else basically. Yeah. And. Um, you can do a lot of other things with it. You can make stickers, magnets, lots of lots and lots of stuff with it. It cuts all kinds of different materials, not just vinyl. So we're super excited to have it. Um, we ended up getting a Silhouette Pro um, Cameo. Silhouette Cameo Pro. It'll cut a 24-inch roll. Uh, at first, we looked at the crickets, but those were limited to 12-inch rolls, and you couldn't cut it off the roll. You had to use a cutting mat or buy special vinyl to that they provide and able to cut it off the roll. Um, we needed a specific type of vinyl. We're using Oracal 751. It's an outdoor vinyl. 
um, it's got UV protection, blah, blah, blah. Holds up really well. It's supposed to have about a seven or eight year lifespan on it. And so uh, we just couldn't find out with the crickets. And so we did some research and ended up getting the silhouette. Been super happy with it. It's really a cool machine. So we got these cut the other day. Um, we just used the exact same font and outline uh, as it, uh, we had up forward. So they'll actually just match. I don't know why we weren't like more imaginative and changed it up, but we just went with what we had. Yep. Because it was easy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hit this the other day with the sander, so that's why it's kind of sh shined up here. I just wanted it. There's a, not real bad, but a few nicks and gouges. I just kind of wanted to knock them down a little bit. And then um, I just shined it up again with the 3M pad. I'm just wiping off the aluminum residual junk. And uh, we're going to go stick these on. I'm just using some rubbing alcohol for this. That cleans it up good. You can see that pretty much got it all now, so I think we're in pretty good shape here. Apologies if any wind noise is making it through. Apparently we don't have our mic cable here. It's on the other boat. <laughs> oh, wind noise? Yeah. That shouldn't be any, really. Yeah, it's slight. Ignore all the chippy gouges on our stern. We know. She's yes, a gel yes. coat. <clears throat> Don't look at it. Avert your eyes. <laughs> yeah, the little fishtail. She needs some love. Needs to go into the yard. Give her a, a nice little vacation, about four months probably. Yeah. You can actually see our previous deck level. Our old scupper holes there. That used to be the old deck. Kind of a fun journey we've been on with this little boat. Yeah, it's such a good boat. Journey. Yeah, if we ever get the outside cleaned up the hole, she'll look real good. Anything you know, else on deck is nice. This is all new within the last five or six years, I guess. Yeah. Something like that. Um, we've tackled all the important parts. The working areas are all tip top shape. So. Yeah. Uh, so with this reel, we got to do a couple of things. We're going to need to lob off this uh, this pipe right here because it's going to interfere with these rings. Um, this is where we'll be mounting it to. These, these are stainless these are, rings from our uh, sanding that we use to uh, roll bags and stuff. Yeah, these are super robust. These go through a fiberglass tube into the fish hold which is the overhangless ceiling right here with the big backing plate. And then they also are bolted through the back side of this through to the fish hold, same thing with a nice backing plate. So this is incredibly strong, like it's not gonna tear out. Um, and so we don't wanna cut that off, but this reel will just span right here if that pipe is in there. So we're gonna cut that pipe off. We're gonna move it up a little bit and um, that should solve that problem. Yeah. So we'll cut that and then we can slide it back here and then we'll be able to bolt that reel right through this plate and it's going to be super strong. Um, all of the force is going to be going forward because it's going to be pulling that way. And so, you know, as long as this bottom is locked down really good, it'll be fine. Yeah, line setting out will be pulling the drum that way, coming off the bottom. So like the whole frame will be pulling like that and yep. like dad said with hauling in it'll be coming forward into the uh, level wind up there so the same direction i think our no future worries about plan flipping or is, anything. Um, is probably to put some kind of rail to slide this forward so uh, we can easily disconnect it right here and push it forward during offloads but we'll get to that later that's not a huge priority right now uh, it shouldn't be too bad to unload, I don't think. I think it should be okay, yeah. We'll just move the reel out and, and uh, we might have to like bring them around the side, but, but it's okay. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. Um, pros and cons. So, what are we doing first? Are we going to work on this or try and get these letterings on? 
Yeah, get the letterings on. Wipe them down. Yep. It's nice and green now. Yes. So here's our letterings. So this is pretty much how it comes from like a store if you bought this stuff from a company that does this. Um, basically what we have here is uh, the backing sheet that, that the uh, vinyl comes on and then after you cut the shape out and you weed it, which is remove all of the, the material that's not going on uh, on your boat or whatever you're putting your decal or lettering on um, and then you come in and, and you put a layer of transfer paper on on it and this basically just allows you to lift it up off the backing like that and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna position these and we'll just put a little piece of tape on the top on each side and that's gonna act as a hinge and so we can move it around we can get it positioned how we want it and then you have your little piece of tape to act as a hinge and you can flip it up and then you can pull off the backing and then just start working it down. And what you'll have left is your lettering with your transfer paper on top of it. And once you get it on there and squeegee down, then you can pull off your transfer paper and then just kind of work out like little weird spots with air bubbles and stuff in it. So it's pretty basic. Um, they make some fluid that you can spray on there to to help facilitate um, installing the stuff. I probably should have got some, but I didn't. And here we are. <laughs> so, um, at any rate, we're gonna stick these up here and kind of figure out how they look good, I guess, and uh, get them glued on here. And wow, it just got hot and muggy out, didn't it? It is muggy out, definitely. Humidity is high. that tape stick skid don't let it, like pull off the aluminum oh and fall in the ocean yeah probably will so let's see these are they're about the same size aren't they yeah so what do you think something like there there probably just I think out just a hair like that Rather than in, right? Okay. Does that look pretty straight? Yeah. Tape. Does that look pretty even and pretty straight? That looks pretty good. There? Down just a hair on your right. Yeah. Good. Right there? Mm hmm. Okay, we're gonna try that, huh? That looks pretty good. I'll go get a tape measure and, uh. <clears throat> And measure it from the top and just even it up and then off of that seam I think and we'll just match them on the side. Maybe in the hair would be better huh? It's out a little far just like yeah break the difference right in the uh, quarter quadrant or whatever you call that. I can If you divide it by three put it right on the middle. Yeah. Well, that'll look good. Mm-hmm. Excited for this. By the way, you guys might be wondering what happened to Emerald Isle. It's not its usual place. And we currently reside over there. For the moment. All right, so we got them taped up. Look pretty good. That's the other nice thing about 
have in the vinyl machine ourselves that if we do mess up, we can make new ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the vinyl is, uh, it's not terribly expensive. So um, the stuff that we got came in a roll. It's uh, 24 inches wide and 10 yards long. So it's 24 by 30 feet. It's a lot of material. Um, it's about 80 bucks. And then shipping was a little bit steep because it came UPS, but uh, but it's not too terrible. I think it puts it somewhere around about a, a hundred or more, I guess. So that's that's an awful lot of vinyl, at any rate. Um, that's three and a quarter right there. And that one's three and a half on the outboard, outboard side and three and a quarter on the inboard side. I think that's why I know that the center leans in so that optical might, or that that tilt might be making a sort of weird perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that looks better. Looks good. All right, let's do it. I think that one looks bigger because the extra transfer paper, huh? Probably. The lettering's the same. Yeah. Um, I just verified it. So we're just using these as hinges right here. So first thing you want to do is just make sure that you can flip it up okay. It's got a little bit of a pucker in the middle, but this transfer paper is actually a lot thinner than this backing, so that should be okay. Um, so next step is, got a clean surface already, got a squeegee, you just want to kind of like slowly work it down, and uh, let's do it. I think in the middle might want to get work down first and then go out each way, huh? Okay. So what we'll do is we'll pull off this backing, and then you just carefully like hold the side up here, and as we lower it, we can... There goes nothing, guys. I got a little bit of weirdness going on right here because I one of my pieces didn't cut right, so hopefully. You want to come from the side instead? Yeah. best if you like keep this really low right here because it tends to not lift it off as much but you gotta got, go kind of slow so you, none of these edges lift up and right there is where I had to replace the, the K because the original cut got messed up Thank you. 
vehicles out if you happen to get one of them. Yeah. They're toward the edge anyways. Yeah. It's giving me some slack there. It's a little bit tough with the curve though. Yeah. The transfer paper will bend a little bit, but not. Oh. I think it's just that I and the K right there. that I would have brought. Do we have something like thin, like a little... Do we have any of those little picks down here? Maybe. Or anything like small that we can like get under it and kind of just like roll it along. That's what we need to do. I know that it'll come out a little bit, but I don't think what I had to do with this actually this KOD was like a repeat three times on the blue <laughs> as we're learning how to work this so when I cut the first piece it bunched the O and the D it turns out the problem was was the weight of the roll the whole roll on the unit it couldn't uh, pull it out and it ended up bunching them and we got it sorted out anyways Oh, you put that over it so it doesn't damage it. No. Or less. Maybe help a little bit. I'm just gonna leave a funny spot, but whatever. Well, 
can just uh, with how we are with uh, <clears throat> Stern here, probably uh, get some nicks and whatnot in no time. Yep. It's kind of annoying, but if it bugs me too much, I'll just make another one. Yep. That's gonna have to work. I don't Can't think anybody's gonna it. be over here inspecting it with their magnifying glass. <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah, That's looks terrible. Good. I can't see a thing. Do you guys see anything? I don't see anything. Dad'll just have to put his blinders on when he walks by. Hug. <laughs> and this key, this key, it's kind of the same thing, I guess, huh? Yep. Too bad. What's the chances that scotch tape is gonna? Foo bar at all. <laughs> Not quite sure how it actually got over the top of the other stuff. Oh, sure, it's annoying me, I'm sure. <clears throat> well, pretty good results. A couple tiny little blemishes. Usually you can kind of work those little pockets out, but See if we mess up the other side now, I guess, huh? Yeah. So these little bars right here just to register the two colors on top of each other. When you lay it out on the program, you can put just a square, a circle, or whatever shape you want to. And you do it on your first one, and then you make a copy of that along with your registration mark. You move that down, and then select your lettering and do an outline on it. And then you can set the amount of black that you want or whatever color you're outlining with. Then you delete your original one, the smaller lettering, and group those back together, and then you can have a registration mark so after you cut your vinyl then you can line up the, the two colors so there's a black underneath this you may or may not have seen it when I pulled it off there a little bit of it so anyways that's how you do that and it's just easy to line up the two colors and get your outline evenly and all that good stuff
Not much, how you doing? Another day in paradise for me, boss. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, on to the next side. Well, we pretty much got that little blemish pretty well cleaned up. Ring Matt, will be gone. Matt said that we ought to split this in half and do one side at a time. That seems like pretty solid advice. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go around here. Uh, Ugh, look at him. Going crazy. Don't be hasty. So that sounded like a pretty good idea. Maybe that's where we went wrong, is that we just gotta go down evenly. Oh, okay, so just kind of... Just get that up. little... Well, that might have done it too, that little pucker, huh? Yeah, make sure all our things are... There you go. ...lined first. Maybe if you just, like, work it down real slow. There we go. I'm trying to remember how intimidating that was when we did the the flying bridge on here, me and mom. I'm pretty sure that we were super duper stressed out about it. <laughs> and it came out good. Yeah, like you guys didn't have a single bubble in that from what I can see. Yeah. Well, I picked away at it a little bit yesterday. Should clean up pretty good. Very nice.
boom down and drag your back a little bit up. Yeah. Lower your slider first before you boom down.